Okay, this video is going to demonstrate how to create a cloud server in Rackspace. Uh, basically, once you log in, you should get to this little dashboard. You see across the top the different things you can do. We'll uh, take a quick tour of that. Servers is where, where we will create our server. Orchestration has some uh, stack ideas uh, where you can basically create um, platform as a service, essentially, if you will, where you are not actually, you know, doing the software installs yourself. All the uh, the instances and everything get created for you, and basically, you're given a platform for managing uh, the service. Uh, networking, do load balancers, uh, create some uh, private networks, I guess, uh, DNS and a CDN. Storage, different types of storage options available. Databases, uh, support. Uh, MySQL, MongoDB, uh, Redis, Elasticsearch. Um, we'll look at that later on. And then backups. You can look at your backups. So we're going to go to servers. We're going to go to cloud servers. We're going to wait for cloud servers. All right, we're going to create a server. Give it a name. Uh, bigger region, doesn't really matter, I'll just leave it the default. We're going to go with the virtual server, uh, CentOS 6 uh, for our purposes, but they support uh, CoreOS, Debian, Fedora, Ubuntu, and uh, Viata. If you want to build your own little private network, you can put a, a Viata uh, image out there to do some routing between your different, different networks. They support Windows, we're definitely not doing that. Currently, it doesn't look like they support the newest stuff, 2016. Uh, so we'll go Linux, CentOS 6. Here's where you can pick the different uh, hardware types you want. There are general purpose uh, instances, uh, compute instances, high memory instances, input output uh, instances, and standard instances. Within each instance type, you can move this little slider to get uh, better or worse performance depending on what you want as you notice as you go up you get a higher price so the cheapest uh standard is uh 2.2 cents an hour the cheapest general purpose is four cents an hour so we will go with standard since we're just doing something simple and not really uh doing anything real um, advanced options you can pick uh what what uh, ssh key you want to use if you have an ssh key up there if you don't have an SSH key and don't specify it, it will give you a password when it creates it. You could, if you had extra networks you wanted to connect it to, you could create, uh, ch change the networks you, you correct, connect to. couple of options, monitor server metrics uh, is free, so you'll get some uh, information in the dashboard about your server performance. And operating system security patches applied on selected images for free, and that's checked. And if you, uh, I clicked on this earlier, it says operating system security patches applied nightly on the following. So what I don't know about this is if the patches require a reboot, will they reboot your server for you? If they're rebooting your server for you, you may or may not want to have them do that automatically because you may want to control when your server gets rebooted. So um, I'm not sure if they do that or not. If I was actually going to use a service, I would probably research it or ask uh, the fanatical support and see what they could tell me. So that's all, uh, all the choices we're going to make. It's going to cost us $0.52 cents a day So we create server. Uh, here's the password. Hopefully it won't take very long. If you uh, don't uh, copy your password, then you'll be kind of messed up later on when you want to connect. So you should probably definitely copy your password. So I copied it and put it in a text file. So I dismissed the password and now it says it's building. Once it finishes, we'll get a IP address or host name we can connect to. We already have an IP address it looks like assigned to see if we can connect I think we'll wait till it's done before we try to connect over here on the side it tells you how to log into your server and it tells you what it's going to say. So we'll see if it says uh, the same thing I just typed when it gets over here.
and it says 90% complete, so let's go ahead and try it for fun. So even though it said 90% complete, even though it said 90% complete, it uh, was already uh, good enough to let us log in. So I copied and pasted the password in, and now I'm logged in as root. So now we have our Linux server. Once we're in here, we do the exact same stuff we would do on any Linux server. So for the purposes of our class, you have instructions for how to install our app and how to install the database and how to create the database and how to make all that work. So that'd be the first step. You, uh, on the single instance, do the same thing we did uh, in the previous lab at the other cloud provider. So we'll do that. Once you get done with that, we're going to move on to the next step of the lab, which is to use the cloud database. So to do that, we have to create the cloud database. So for that, we'll go over to databases, MySQL. We'll uh, create a single instance. We'll name it Rich Demo MySQL. Uh, region, Chicago again, school. Um, MariaDB, uh, MySQL, or Pracona are the supported options. Pretty much all of these are uh, very are, are MySQL compatible, um, but they have some additional functionality on top of MySQL. So this one says MariaDB is high performance. Uh, it is compatible with MySQL, but adds many new capabilities and enhancements to address the most challenging web and enterprise application use cases. And then Percona says something similar. Percona is a high performance open source drop-in replacement to MySQL. So uh, pretty much all those uh, should work. We're going to go with MySQL 5.6 because I'm pretty sure that works because that's what we've used in the past. We'll change it to a small size because it doesn't really matter for what we're doing. And then down here we will put the database name which our database was address book. The username was www and then the password is whatever we made the password. So I'm not actually going to create it because I'm not going to go through uh, the steps to uh, install and make the app work because you did that last week so you should know how to do that. But basically once you create this you'll be able to connect to it. And well actually I'm going to create it. Oh, my passwords don't match. Never. All right, so it's creating, and uh, I, the, the main reason I wanted to uh, create it was so I could show you how you connect to it, right? Here's the host name. So in your MySQL commands where you put the dash H, uh, you'll need to specify this host name, uh, after the dash H to connect to it. And in our, our uh, config file within our PHP code, this is what you'll put for the, uh, for the URL. I think, I think we called it something URL. Uh, so this is what you'll need to put for that. So I'm not actually going to let this finish building uh, for the video because I'm not actually going to go through and, and use it. But that is how you get started and that is how you uh, make it work uh, like we did last week. Uh, in the previous lab using the other cloud provider. So uh, that's it.